Gentlemen, again, we did save the best for our last. Our next chef's cooking roots stem to his upbringing in Louisiana, where his grandmother taught him how to prepare authentic Creole dishes. We've seen him on the sixth season of Food Network's Cutthroat Kitchen. Good job. And he opened his highly anticipated new food concept, Will's Way Creole Kitchen, which burst onto the Atlanta culinary scene. He just launched his own a line of Creole seafood seasoning. Please welcome Chef Will Brown. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. How are y'all? It's a little quiet in here today, guys. Y'all all right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're going to pump it up? All right. Well, guys, Chicago, thank you for inviting me out. Today is going to be fun. We're going to have some crowd participation, and we're going to make this work, right? Yay. Even in the back, because I'm going to, the ones in the back is really who I'm going to deal with, because I know y'all are back there for a purpose, right? <laughs> Not to be bothered, right? Right, all right. Well, today, guys, thank you so much. We are making um, Creole, uh, what are we making today? Creole gumbo. I'm so used to making jambalaya, but today we're doing gumbo. Um, I have an all-natural Creole uh, seasoning and um, an all-natural roux that we're going to use today. Everyone always talks about how long gumbo takes to make, but I'm going to show you guys how this gumbo is going to take 40 minutes, and that's it. Isn't that something new? Yay. Yes. Where is everyone from? Where are you from? Chicago. Chicago. What part? Chicago. Near south. Near south. All right. Where are you from, darling? Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome. Where are you from? Boulder, Colorado. Well, God, we have people from all over. Where are you from? Boca Raton, Florida. And where are you from? Chicago. Okay, so we have our, our front row seaters. We got, you guys are from a little part, different parts of the world, which is good, and every, everyone cooks different. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a Creole all-natural chef, so I'm going to give you a little Creole, Creole for your souls today. Would that work? Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. So who's ever made gumbo before? Oh, God, nobody has made gumbo. Oh, Jesus. Has anybody ever eaten it before? Yeah. The whole crowd. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, good, 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 good. Well, um, today what we're going to do is we have, um, we have some andouille sausage. We have ch uh, chicken breast. We have onions. We have, um, we have uh, celery, and we have bell pepper. And then we have my all-natural Creole seasoning to go in it, and we also have the um, root to go with it. Um, Basically, what you're going to do first when you always start, who likes to cook with vegetables? All right. What do you like to, what do you like, what do you like to cook? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you like to cook, darling? Any vegetables? Okay. All right. So, you have anybody, any, did anybody said ever been to New Orleans? Okay, so everybody always associates uh, Louisiana with New Orleans as if there's no other part of the state, but there is more to the state than just New Orleans, which is a shame, but there, there's many parts. So we're from a place that's called Appaloosas, which is in between Lafayette and Baton Rouge, and it's probably about an hour, 30 minutes outside of New Orleans. So if you ever get a chance or you're ever up that way up the neck of the woods, just drive down about an hour or two and get you some really, really good food. Anybody know the difference between Cajun and Creole? All right, red, red, brown, red and brown. Okay, I'll give you that. But what I'm going to give you is Cajun is spicy, Creole is saucy. That's the difference. So if you ever go somewhere and you're, and you're saying, oh, my goodness, I don't eat that food because it's very hot, no. Creole food is not hot. I mean, it's, it's about what you put in it, but it always works. Trust me, it's very, very, very good. We like to do a lot of things with rice and, so, and a lot of things with gravies. Anybody like rice? Yeah. Anybody know how to cook rice? Rice cooker, okay, that always works. We got a newcomer, and how you doing? Where are you from? Chicago, okay, okay. Well, we're gonna show you how to make a little Creole food today. How's that? That way, he said, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, anybody, uh, let's see, does anybody know the first step of actually making a gumbo? The roux, the roux is always the key to success, right? Right, right, right. So who, how, who knows how to start a roux? Flour and butter, okay. And what? Frying pan, okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, nothing's wrong with that. Well, what we actually do, um, th today I actually have a powdered roux that I actually use for, that's my actual roux, which it's already pretty much seasoned. I'm ready to go. It takes about 30 minutes to use this. But with the actual roux that you make from scratch, um, it, you actually can use vegetable oil and actual all-purpose flour, okay? It takes about 30, 35 minutes to actually make that roux. You brown it darker than me or you want it blacker than me. 
right? Right, so the black, the darker it is, the lighter it comes. That's the way it works, okay? So if it gets dark, 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 it's gonna come very uh, decent brown. If you do it light, it's gonna be white. You ever seen that before? So some people like to do that to make gravies. You know, you can do that, the butter and the actual flour real quick to make a gravy, which that's fine. But when you're making a roux, you wanna really use, all, use vegetable oil and, and actual really good flour and all-purpose flour to make that work, okay? Remember that. So Chef Will said what? Exactly. So that's exactly, that's exactly how that works. Um, so what we're going to do today is they've already actually started a, actually a pot for me, which is fine. And it's, it's, it's coming to success is what it's doing. So I'm going to check on it real quick why it's, doing, why it's boiling. All right. How many people like seafood? Seafood. So would you actually put the seafood in your, in your gumbo? Or would you leave it separate? Inside? No seafood allergic? Yes, definitely. Everything. That's what I'm talking about, everything, everything, everything. That's exactly what you do. You put everything in there. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start. So the first thing you do is you start making the roux, which our roux is already made, so we don't have to worry about that step. The thing about it is if you're having company, you're like, oh, my goodness, I want some good Creole food. We got to figure this out real quick. Go right to it. Start a, a pot of water. Uh, do probably about four cups of water would be fine, depending on how many people. A pot this size will actually feed probably about 10 to 12 people, and that's a lot. 10 to 12, and, and have a little, a little extra for your actual freezer. Um, so what you'll actual, actually do is start cutting up your vegetables. So you'll start, you'll take your chroma um, chef knife. Let's find the chef knife, chef. Let's find the chef knife, chef. Let's find the chef knife, chef. OK, there we, <laughs> there we go. Right, so you'll use your, your new turbo knife made by Chroma uh, USA. Um, this is a fabulous knife. I have actually used these knives probably for two years. This is a new brand that at, actually just came out this year. It's, um, it's called Turbo with the little blue pin on it. Very, very nice. This is a knife that you actually will put, out, put on your cabinet, and when your friends come, they'll be like, oh, my goodness, what is that? You tell them, go get your Chroma Porsche made by F.A. Porsche. Fabulous knife. Fabulous, fabulous. All right, so what you'll do is you'll take your onion. You'll start with your onion, okay? You can either slice your onion or dice your onion. It's up to you. Mine is already done, but I'm going to just show you real quick what I normally do. I slice them into pieces, kind of like this, because I like, my, I like my onion and bell pepper to show in my actual gumbo. What happens is some people don't like onion and bell pepper, and they don't like to eat it. So I like for people to see what they're eating, right? That works. So I'd actually add my onion to it. So I'm going to go ahead and add the onion to it. All right. After that, um, you get your celery. Well, cut your celery. Just add that. And you'll just dice, you'll just dice your celery real, real fine or real big. It's up to you the way you want it, okay? You hold your knife correctly, just like this, right behind it and the hook, all right? So if you got to get rid of it, you can get rid of it, just like that. <laughs> I said, whoa, right, just like that, all right? <laughs> oh, that's too funny, right. So you'll add that. And then you'll add your bell pepper. When you, slice, when you slice your bell pepper, you can either slice your bell pepper or dice your pepper. How many people have washed their vegetables when they're actually preparing their dinner? Ooh, out of line. Nobody? Yeah. Anybody wash your vegetables? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I was about to question y'all. You know, my mother always told me, you be real careful with, at the certain people's house you eat at because people don't wash everything. Now, y'all got me very worried. All right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Welcome, Mama Brown. My mother's actually here. She's the one who created this specimen, and she's the one who created this, these recipes for me. So I give thanks to her today. Yes. Mom is here visiting from Texas, and I'm here from Atlanta. Yes. All right, Mom. I know you're watching me, girl. I know you're going to tell me later what it is I did not do, but we're going to still do it my way. That's why it's called Will's Way, right? Right. All right. So on to the next. So how many people walk into people's house, and they're like, oh, girl, we're cooking. Come on over. And you walk in there, and there is nothing that smells like food. How many of y'all have friends like that? I, <laughs> nothing smells like food. You're like, I thought you were cooking. That's you? Girl, good night. I know better. <laughs> Are you serious? No, 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 no. So the key to success is Will's Way Creole seasoning. This is always the key to success. I am, I am plugging, plugging, plugging today. Y'all hear me? Plugging, all right? So you use just a good Creole seasoning. If you don't have Will's Way Creole seasoning, I'll, I'll okay it to go with any uh, seasoning that you like. But to get the best taste, you need you a nice 
blended seasoning, either an all-natural seasoning or an all-natural herb seasoning, something that blends well with the flavors. Because the key to success and the key to Creole food is herbs and the way they actually, the way things smell, okay? All right, so you're, you're gonna actually season your, um, season your pot, exactly, season to taste, okay? You just pour, girl, you don't measure any. You measure? Oh, she, she lost, y'all. Do you measure? Well, no, we're not baking, baby. We cooking. We no bake today. Yeah, that's why there's called a sous chef. I mean, that's, it's called a chef, and it's called a pastry chef. We don't mesh. We don't follow rules. We just do what we want to do. Okay, right? Y'all got that? All right. That's why it's called Will's Way. You do what you want to do. All right. So I always tell people in my classes, you cook to taste. Cook to taste. As you pour, you taste. You pour, you taste. Okay. So basically, what I just did, I poured in my seasoning, and so I'm gonna taste and see how it tastes. If it's too salty, you know you add more water. But right now, that has no taste at all. It has zero taste because what's happening is you have a pot of water, it's just like a soup. You have to pour a lot of seasoning in there to be able to get the taste that you need. Gumbo, the way people mess up is one is the roux, the roux is not right, and two, if there's not enough seasoning. A lot of people have a big pot of water looking, looking like gumbo, but tastes like ugh. Y'all ever had that? Yeah, yeah exactly, all right. So, um, so we're gonna pour in the seasoning. So in this seasoning, it's an all natural, it has garlic powder, onion powder, and it has a little chili powder, a little sugar, and a little Chef Will's Way blend in it, okay? That's how that works. So you're gonna keep seasoning until it comes to success, okay? Got it? Got it, all right. So then you're gonna turn over to your, um, to your roux. You've actually already, so the, the key, you've seasoned, you're seasoning twice. You're seasoned with your vegetables, you season with your actual seasoning. You got that? So what did I say? Your roux, I mean your vegetables, and then your seasoning, right? right. Ooh, y'all are very quiet. You know, I'm not liking this. I need some, I need some participation. There you go. All right, what'd she say? <laughs> seasoning, seasoning, and seasoning. There you go. <laughs> There you go. All right, all right. So, you, um, so, you, so, we, so far we've added the onion, the bell pepper, and the actual um, celery. I don't know why I can't get with celery today, y'all. And then we're gonna add a little garlic. How many people like garlic? Yeah, garlic is success too. It tastes very good. It brings your food to, it brings your food just right. So you're gonna add your garlic to it, okay? It's a lot of vegetables. Are y'all saying, God, it's a lot of vegetables. You think it's a lot of vegetables? Not really. Y'all think, y'all think it's a lot of vegetables back there? Where are you from? You're from where? Michigan. Michigan. Where are you from? The suburbs. The suburbs. Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. I gotta feel like I'm here. I gotta feel like I want it. All right, here we go. All right, so so far, again, it's still not enough seasoning, so I'm gonna add a little more seasoning to make sure that it gets there, okay? So I'm gonna add a little more seasoning. Um, I probably use about, probably about, um, five tablespoons of seasoning to give you a kind of a roundabout, because some people are like, I need to know how much to add. Cook to taste, everybody has different taste palettes. That's why I'm called the, the Taste Master. Fox Network, I was on a show called Superhuman. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show. They come on Fox. Basically what happens is you have to go in and explain exactly what's missing out of the recipe, and guess what? Chef Will and Chef Elliot Graham went up, and guess I told him what was missing in that dish, and guess what it was? taste. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He said, chef. I'm like, yes, you need a little more seasoning in that. All right. So moving on from that, I've added my vegetables. How many people know about andouille sausage? You know about andouille, you know about andouille, you know about andouille, you know about andouille, you know about andouille. That's right. Andouille is the key to success too. Um, andouille goes in a lot of things. We put it in red beans and rice. We put it in jambalaya. We'll saute it, make it over a little red gravy and a little rice. We do many things with that. Um, we, 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 we do it, we do it, love it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now that your um, water has been boiling for like 10 minutes, you've added your vegetables, you added your seasoning, now is the time you would actually add your roux, all right? So for the ones that like to make their roux from scratch, which um, the recipe will be online on my website, which is just chefwillbrown.co, you can just Google the name and it'll pop up. The recipes are on there. This is an actual recipe that I do in my cooking classes a lot. Um, that people love. We, we do a lot of cooking classes. So if you're ever up in the Georgia area, Atlanta area, look us up. We do lots of classes. Come and see Chef Will. So you're gonna pour your actual roux 
in there. So basically what you'll do is, don't follow what Chef Will just did, you would actually take this, put it in some cold water, stir it up, and add it to your pot, okay? But we're gonna do this because it's already hot because we're ready to drop it like it's hot, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Because everybody's standing there. Because if we was in Louisiana, we would have some zaddy corn on right now, and y'all would be up dancing while I'm cooking this food. Because that's just what we do in my mama's kitchen, right, Ma? That's right. All right, so we've added the roux. You'll turn your pot on medium high. Who cooks on high? Oh, that is. <laughs> Right, you'll be surprised how many people cook them hot and burn their pots, exactly. Especially when they got cheap pots. Who got cheap pots at home? It, you, <laughs> who got some cheap pots at home? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all got those $69.99 pots. Who got those kind of pots at home? And they cook the best, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. So what I'm putting in here now, y'all, is a little bay leaf. Bay leaf gives it a flavor. You cr let it crunch. You crunch the bay leaf because, again, you don't want that. You don't want the people to see because that's your secret ingredient is the bay leaf. You can put bay leaf in soup. You can put bay leaf in red beans. You put the bay leaf in gumbo. Did you know that? You did not. You just learned something today. Host, my host just learned something today. I know that's right. So you're going to add that bay leaf. I do a, maybe about three of them. And... Um, make that work. So we're gonna move that out of the way. All right, so once you do that, you continue to let your pot boil, okay? Um, at this time, you should be checking to see how thick your roux is and see the consistency of your roux. So basically what you'll do is you'll keep checking your pot, you'll keep checking it. Um, even though this is, um, is very light because we didn't add enough roux, but our, our ready pot has that, okay? And we'll switch over with that. Can you guys see okay? Okay. So this is the way this looks. How many people would add their meat um, now or how many people would wait? Seafood last, that's correct. Sausage first, okay, anybody else? Sausage first, all right. Well, I'll let you know exactly how that works. That's why I'm here, right? <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> so what you're gonna do is, your sausage is second to last. Yeah, one thing, because what happens is some of the sausage is already smoked. In Louisiana, we use a lot of smoked meat. We do smoked sausages that goes in the gumbo. Now, um, I live in Atlanta, um, restaurant based Atlanta, cooking classes based in Atlanta, everything I do is based in Atlanta. Again, from um, Louisiana, uh, born and raised, my mom and, and dad, by way of Texas for me. But a lot of people now are going on this health kick and they are not wanting to use the pork and the beef. They want to stick to vegetarian or they want to stick to turkey. Well, we don't use turkey sausage in gumbo, okay? How many people love turkey? I, I love you. What's your name? Where are you from, darling? Seattle. Yes, Miss Washington. Yes, we do not use turkey and gumbo, but we'll sell it. If they'll buy it, we're going to sell it. Know that. <laughs> we're going to sell it. Know that. Um, so <laughs> nowadays you have, the, you, know, you have to bring in something else to, to make it work. So we'll do a smoked turkey sausage or a, ta a turkey tasso. Tasso is like a beef jerky meat that's already smoked that you add to your actual dish. Um, so you'll add that to your pot. You really should use your uh, a smoked sausage or use your andouille sausage. That is really the success to your gumbo. If you don't have that, you're really not eating the right thing. But you'll, you know, certain things you bring in to bypass what you, ca what you need when you really don't eat it anymore, or pork, which I understand people are not doing that for health reasons. I self need to not be doing that, but guess what? You gotta go from something, baby, and it's gonna go from what I like eating, right? That's right, <laughs> that's right, exactly. So um, with that is you'll add your andouille sauce. I mean, you would add your andouille sauce your second to last. Now, what you would do is now that your gumbo, say for instance, have been going for about 20, 25 minutes, your sausage right is tasting good and you're like, oh, they got the whole house smelling right. That's when you know it's right. You'll add your chicken. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take a cup of chicken and we're gonna add the chicken to, um, do I have some gloves? Y'all got me some gloves? Okay, right. You're gonna add a little um, chicken to your gumbo. Two things you can do. You can pre-season your chicken or you can just add the chicken breast. So I'll tell you what Chef Will do. When I'm in the restaurant, Chef Will does not season the chicken. We just add the chicken to the, to the actual roux because we don't want to over-season. Chef Will is a heavy hand, has a heavy hand. I season heavy. So I have to take things from the base, which is water. A lot of people like to start their gumbos, and if you look up a lot of recipes online, they like to use broth, chicken broth or beef broth to start the gumbo. 
Too salty, won't work, not original, not the tea. Remember that. What did I say? Too salty, not original, not the tea. That's it. You missed one, girl. <laughs> you got it, though. You there. You there, Ms. Xavier. I heard backstage that you're from Xavier. Is that where you went to school? I support that. I was listening back there to see who was what so that I knew what I was dealing with. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to add a little chicken to the gumbo. How many people wash your chicken? Two, oh, two people out of 100. Oh, okay, that's fine. So you add some chicken. <laughs> you add a little chicken to your gumbo. Um, in Louisiana, we actually use whole ch pieces of chicken. Um, the actual leg, the actual breast, the actual, the whole chicken, we use it. You season it and you add it to your pot. But here, what we're gonna do, we, um, my lovely sous chef over here chopped up my breast for me <laughs> and I'm adding it to the water. So, um, and I'm not gonna season it because I don't wanna over season. So I just add the chicken breast to it. You let that cook for probably about another 20 minutes because we wanna make sure that that chicken is right. Personally, I like my chickens to, to really fall apart in the water because that lets me know that it's actually, it's cooked, okay? At that point, after, after the 20 minutes and it's already cooking, you're going to then go and taste, all right? So we're gonna get a clean spoon. I'm not sure, um, I don't remember because I'm always all over the place. Are they, can they taste food here? Okay, cannot taste because I normally pull a sampler from the crowd to actually help Chef Will taste and that just sucks, right? I know, so Chef Will's gonna be the one to taste it. So you do a little blow. That's right, <clears throat> okay. Woo! Okay. <laughs> right. All right. So at that point, we didn't did the 20 minute. We didn't roll with that. We're going to then add the sausage. So I want to see just from by hands who would actually put the turkey sausage in their gumbo. Because it, this is the part of educating Chef Will. How many people would put turkey in their gumbo? No? Okay. So um, you can actually do a smoked turkey neck in the gumbo to give that smoked turkey taste if you want to. But as far as sausage goes, I would not use the sausage, okay? Remember that. The neck can go, but the sausage can't. Remember what I said? The neck can go, but the sausage can't. That's right. All right. Um, so at that point, I'm going to add the sausage. Um, add the sausage to it. So let me add my glove to it because these sausages are very greasy. Yes. So how many people have actually today came to do business or just came to play today? Who came to do business today? Yeah, they, I came to play. I don't know about y'all, but I came to play. Right. Like Miss Beyonce said, because we did, we're going to slay today with this gumbo. Okay. All right. So you'll add you a couple of pieces of sausage. You'll cut them up. And the pre, and the um, pregame is how many people pregame before they go out? Right. Uh, you know, my front row off the chain over here. <laughs> Right, y'all off the chain. So you go. So when you get ready to, um, as they say, prep in, in our world. But when I say, when I'm teaching, I tell I want y'all to pregame. When you get ready to pregame, you go ahead and cut up everything. You cut up your sausage. You cut your chicken up. Um, clean your chicken and wash your chicken. And then you get all your vegetables cut. That's exactly what you do before you start your gumbo. Then at that time, that's when you'll start your actual root to pull things together. Okay. That's exactly how what I do and how I work. All right. So at that time, once you add your sausage, you'll let your sausage cook probably for another 20, I'll say 15, 20 minutes. You just want to make sure they're cooked, and you want that flavor to be, start going around in the gumbo. Anybody have any questions right now with this gumbo? No. Okay. No, no questions? Anybody in the back? Anybody got questions? They got people reading magazines. They're drinking coffee. Uh-uh. Any questions back there in the back? Oh, here we go. Okay. Getting them together, y'all. <laughs> There, so hey. you're from Louis Louisiana. My yes. son lives in Lake Charles. I just uh, visited him, had the best. We drove into NOLA, had some, okay. some food. So what uh, part of Louisiana are you from? So actually, uh, my mom, my, they were born and well grew up in um, Opelousas, but my grandparents and my family, all majority of my family now is in Lake Charles. And they, um, they are actually coon asses, and that's exactly what they do. Zodico and the whole flow of it. And I've spent a lot of my summer, I've spent most of my summers there in Lake Charles um, learning all of this. And I always told my mom, I said, if I ever have children, I would never make my children go somewhere for the summer. But I thank God for it now, because guess what? I am who I am because of that. So, exactly. Any other questions? 
Have you ever made a vegetarian gumbo? Um, yes, I've had made vegetarian gumbo. I'm um, actually, you know, in the back, I thought that's what y'all was making, but then I came to senses once I saw the. <laughs> the senses once I saw it. No, just kidding. Yeah, vegetarian gumbo is great. Um, you would just have to pick um, some decent vegetables to put in the gumbo um, to fulfill the bowl. Um, but yes, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. It reminds it remind me of a vegetable soup. Like, we make vegetable soups all the time. Can I use a meat substitute like jackfruit in that? Yeah, you could, definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I was going to say there's a lot of other substitutes that you can actually use in that to make that work. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Y'all worry. Y'all scared. Y'all worry back there. Okay. That's fine. But Chef, we're gonna continue to cook. All right. So my next question is: So while your gumbo is cooking, how many people uh, did ask about the rice situation? How many people know how to make rice? So without a rice cooker. Okay. I'm gonna go back here. Which can I? Can I have a mic back here? Can I get a mic? Can you turn me up so I can hear myself? Um, very back. Oh. Um, I, I'd like to know what the first step is of making rice. Water in the pan. Water in the pan. Water in the, I put my water in my pan. Okay. And what? And boil <laughs> it with a little salt and butter. Okay. Okay. And then when it comes to a boil, I put my rice in. Okay. Question. Do you wash the rice? I do not. You do not. Okay. Should I? Yes. You should always wash your rice probably about... My mom always taught me to wash your rice about 10 times, but Chef will be doing cuts and I have to wash about seven. And do you know the reason why you need to wash it? I do not. Okay, so what happens is there ro there's rocks that come in that rice, and if you don't wash that rice and fill your hands through those rocks, those rocks are probably in there that you don't see, and you're cooking those rocks, those grind, those, that grind into your rice. Well, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you just learned something today, right? So what do you do to your rice, sis? Okay, okay. I wash till it's clear. That's exactly, what, yeah. about, about the 12th time, it's normally clear, it's no longer cloudy, and it just works. Yep. That's exactly what happens. It, it depends. If you're doing Spanish, then it's butter and toast. If gotcha. You know, white, it's, you know, okay. You make it. Yeah, um, and I've, ne I've never eaten rice with butter before. Um, Mom just never, I've never had that before. I know, it's crazy. And I don't need, I need to stay away from rice anyway, but um, I've never had that before, but they say it's really good. Um, I've, I've seen clients, customers come in the restaurant and they will want to put, put on the rice and, and not take the gravy, which I get it, but I mean, it looks good though. I've never had it, but it looks good. All right, so normally what I normally do right now while the gumbo's almost done, by this time the gumbo's been gone for, going for about 45 minutes and you start the rice. After you've washed the rice about 12 times, you've got the cloudiness out, you turn your rice on medium, medium high, and you leave your top halfway on and off. This is if you don't have a rice cooker. Leave your, leave your pot half on and off, and you let it cook. Come back about 15 more minutes, you turn it down to medium. It's three steps to this. Medium high, medium, then low. You let it simmer. When you turn it to medium low, you're going to then, all the water is gone. You should have approximately 12 holes in the, um, <laughs> 12 holes in the, um, in, <laughs> in the rice. I did not say the other thing, y'all, because everybody's giggling. 12 holes in the rice, and you, 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 you cover the top. Once you cover the top, you drop it down like it's hot to medium, all right? I mean to low, just to medium. You drop it to low. You let it simmer for probably another 12 minutes. The rice will not be gummy. The rice will not be sticky. It will be very fluffy and nice. That is the key to success to rice, right? The key to success to rice. So at that point, what you'll do is pull the rice um, to actually make the gumbo. You will turn your gumbo off. You let your gumbo settle. Why, do I, why would I want my gumbo to sit and settle? Ooh, nobody knows. Lord Jesus. Okay. Flavors, guys. We want the flavors there. So we want it to rest. Just like when you're cooking a steak, as soon as the steak comes off the grill, who cuts the steak when it comes off the grill? Besides Chef Ann Brown, my mother. Who, who does, besides her, who does that? <laughs> Right, at that, <laughs> y'all are sh I can't, okay. <laughs> um, you, let your, you let the gumbo sit and rest because you want your flavors to settle and you want it to have a good flow with it, okay? Um, I said let it sit for probably 10 to 12 minutes. That's all it takes, 10 to 12 for it to come right. And then you'll serve it with the rice. Some people like a lot, you got a question? Okay, 
Some people like a lot of rice, some people do not. I don't like a lot of rice. I like just enough rice with a little gravy and chicken and sausage around it. And that's exactly how I would do that. It's very good, very easy. Um, you can do many things with it uh, from the storing of it. You can actually um, take the broth out of it or you can take the chicken out of it if you don't want to take the broth, Lord Jesus. Take the chicken out of it and just freeze the broth for when you want to do more of it. It's easy to just freeze, put it in the freezer, and take it out and add fresh chicken to it. So how many people store, likes to store food and reheat? Yeah, I'm the same way. You, you like that to store? So what do, you, what do you like to store? Any soups or? The next day? Okay, okay. What about the next month? <laughs> okay. The best thing smoking, right? Oh, yes. That food saver. It's, it's great. Anybody, if you don't have a food saver, that's not an endorsement, but anybody have a food saver, get you one. It's the best thing ever. Um, I like to save my actual uh, roux. If you're making roux from scratch, you can save your roux for up to about six to nine months. Mom pulls it out for me all the time if I come home to visit, and she'll run a quick gumbo real quick and make that work. But now that Chef Will has a new roux out, there's no need for it, right? Right. Um, so I'm going to skip back over from the storage back over to the roux real quick because basically you can store the roux when you make it from scratch. With this actual roux, the powdered roux, um, you don't, for a pot this size that'll feed up to 10 to 12 people, you don't have to use a whole bag. You can use a half a bag of the roux and use, it, use the rest on the next. Okay? Is that, doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. You can always go online to chefwhipbrown.co and actually get that roux. Um, any questions about what's fixing or anything? Anybody have any questions? All right, so um, that's our next question, our next situation. So if, if, if you're gonna add any other vegetables to it as far as the okra goes, how many people have had okra gumbo before? What, how, did, how have you had it? Um, was, did you actually see the okra or did you not see the okra? You actually saw it. Was it slimy? No? Yes? Simon? All right. Where did, what part of the world did you eat it in? New uh, Orleans. Okay. Slimy. Okay. Mississippi? What part? Gulf Coast? Okay. So there's two, there's two ways. Um, there's there's your, that way and that way. Um, again, so every, and that's what brings me to explaining the difference between uh, New Orleans, and then there's another part of Louisiana, okay? So, and there's more to, you know, Louisiana than just New Orleans, because that's everybody knows New Orleans. So, a uh, little, little two hours down the way, we actually cook our okra, okay? We smother the okra, and y'all say, what is smother, right? Smother, you smother the okra down. So what smother means cook down. You cook the okra all the way down into nothing, okay? It's into seeds, and it looks just like onions, that looks, it looks just like onions that have been sauteed. That's the way your okra should be. You should season your okra, and you should take the, a little, a, a cap of vinegar. The vinegar is what takes away the slime from the okra, okay? You cook that for about 10 minutes, and all the slime will be gone. Nowadays in restaurants, they're serving this food so quick, they're just adding the okra fresh out the bag, popping it into the food, and running with it. If you don't know any better, you're gonna eat it and say, oh, this is the best thing smoking, but that is not the correct way. So soon, guys, I will have a new show coming out on a network near you. We're not going to say what network, but just look out for it. Um, we will be, I will be educating along with my family, my team, and talking about educating the right ways to actually use and eat the brand of Louisiana food. Again, there's a Creole way, there's a Cajun way, there's a North Louisiana, there's a South Louisiana. But everything should be cooked and everything should have a consistency and everything should have a steady flow. Nothing should be chunky, nothing should be crunchy, and nothing should be slimy. Nothing should be slimy. Everything and got my mouth all watery because I'm hungry now, talking about it. But that's exactly how that should work, okay? Um, the plain white vinegar. The, the plain white vinegar is exactly the vinegar you should use. It's very, um, not a lot of it because you don't want to get to taste in that. You just want to, bam, go, and that's it. Got it? All right. Any other questions? I sure wish you guys could taste this gumbo, because guess what? It is right popping. It is good as ever. But you guys can um, come to uh, 
4831 is kind of where at Chroma uh, FA Porsche is kind of where I'll be for a little bit before I head up out of here. And I might have a little taste of gumbo over there. So I don't know, it just depends. Y'all got me? <laughs> 4831, we have new knives, we have all that over there. So come and try it out, okay? We'll have it all ready, all right? All right, I want to thank you guys for letting Chef Will come here and invade y'all space today. Chicago, love you guys to death, and good evening. Thank you so much, Chef Will Brown, everyone. Again, 4831, the Chroma booth. Also, go on to his web address, uh, website, chefwillbrown.com.